The dirt under this vast area of land is critical for the new mining era. We plan to develop a globally significant nickel cobalt operation which can feed into the electric vehicle revolution. It could be added to electric vehicle chassis, so lightweight, high strength aluminium. New resources are hard to find. The world's biggest miner, BHP, warns future investment decisions will be made in countries that best support the search. Governments that do provide this certainty and stability will be the winners in this race to meet the world's need for critical minerals. Our government is under pressure to be part of that race. It's updating its list of critical minerals deemed essential to modern technology, the economy and our national security. We've seen in recent years the federal government basically use the list to direct funding, um, so, you know, into uh, industry, into businesses and also into other government agencies. The International Energy Agency predicts the world needs about 60 more nickel mines by 2030, like the one planned here in Western Australia to meet growing demand. Under this red dirt is 1.3 million tonnes of nickel ore. That's enough to make 32.5 million EV batteries. But nickel is not on our current list of 26 critical minerals our strong allies and peers in Japan, the United States and Canada all have nickel classified as a critical mineral, so I'd like to think it's only a matter of time before Australia follows suit. It's not just nickel that advocates want prioritised. The most fundamental is copper is added to the list. Copper is, of course, available at a global level, um, but we are not mining enough of it for future needs. The United States Inflation Reduction Act offers hundreds of billions of dollars in tax cuts and subsidies to accelerate America's transition to net zero. While companies here may be able to access it under a deal granting us special status, there are concerns it has the potential to draw investment away from Australia. We can't even begin to put forward hundreds of billions of dollars. But what we can do is make sure that we've got the right environment, the right policies to support new industries in Australia. So that's taxation, workplace relations, environmental approvals that are done quickly. The Association of Mining and Exploration Companies hopes adding to our critical minerals list will mean a greater number of smaller companies get a head start. If we can find a way of getting the right sort of 30 or 35 of those um, and then putting policies behind to incentivise their development, then we'll do really well. Warren Pearce says the review needs to move beyond mining. It should be looking at those value adding opportunities. How do we take the opportunity with critical minerals um, to value add, to chemically process and to get further down the value chain and keep more of that value here in Australia. <laughs> About 700 kilometres east of Perth, plans are well underway to mine lithium. And that's probably like a 2.5% grade. Despite the commodity being on the list, the company behind the exploration is facing hurdles. Certainly around the infrastructure access piece, you know, making a level playing field in terms of accessing logistics infrastructure, but also port access, I think is going to be really important. That's where I think the government can, um, can certainly get more involved. The Resources Minister said the Critical Minerals Review aims to capture more value from our resources and create diverse, resilient and sustainable critical minerals supply chains. But capturing that value is more than a list of words.